All right, all right. What's going on, everybody? God bless. Hope everybody's doing well on this beautiful Friday night as we give God the honor, the glory, and all the praise. My title says, this is why I don't go to church no more. This is why I don't go to church no more. And let me say this off top so nobody won't think I'm, you know, being funny in this video and telling people don't go to church. First of all, I understand why people go to church and I understand why people don't go to church. I know a lot of people that don't go to church and I know a lot of people that do go to church. It's each to their own. God bless you. And I'm not sitting there saying that just because you go to church that you're going that you're going to get in heaven quicker than anybody else because you're going to church. And I'm not going to sit here in this video and say you're going to hell because you don't go to church. So let's just, you know, state that off top. The other day, I had a chance to talk to a bunch of people, you know, male and female, and we got on the subject talking about why I don't go to church. And I was just asking everybody, you know, they always ask me questions, I ask them questions. And we got to the point of talking about some of the reasons why people don't go and why they have been turned away from the church. So I just wanted to share this video with y'all also too and, um, you know, get a little feedback from the family, you know, on what y'all take is on this. And what what um, stood out to me when I asked this first, brother, I said, well, what's your reason why you don't like going to church? You know what he said? I'm just really not ready to go to church. He said he can't go to church until he get his life right, until he get his life in order. And I thought that was very interesting because I didn't laugh at that because a lot of people I think I told K-Ray this a long time ago. A lot of people try to get so perfect. And then they start thinking, well, you know, I can't, God can't use me until I get like this or get like that. And I was telling K-Ray a long time ago, that's why I'm so proud of you. K-Ray, if you're looking at this video, God bless you. You know, I love you, brother. We go all the way back since we was little. And I was telling K-Ray how God uses the most messed up people. Now I'm saying, am I saying you go to God any kind of way? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying we will never be perfect like that until we get into that spiritual body. And he said, I got to get my life right first, man. I talk too bad. I, you know, I got a lot of things wrong with me. I said, but do you know how many people in the church got something wrong with them? My question is, how do you get your life right without God? Hmm. That's why I say I understand people that, that go to church and people that don't go to church. So I'm just, you know, once again talking about some things I I was able to, you know, talk to with some people in this video and share it with y'all. And the problem is, going back to that first question, you know, I'm not ready to go when I asked him. I, I just got to give myself an order. Here's the problem, brothers and sisters. We think we got so much time left to live. And when you look around, we dying like the snap of a finger every day. A lot of people think they got so much time to get their life right. And we see that death has no age on it. People getting killed by storms, murder. You know, we got we got so much crime going on. People breaking into people's houses, killing them left and right. We got all this shooting. We got all this stuff going on. Sickness on the land. People dying in the hospital, no matter what the age is. We don't have all that time like we think we do. We got to get our life right while we live and while we breathing right now. And if you're going to say that, well, you know, I, I got to get my life together first, then you're going to use that, that excuse. You might not have another chance to get your life right. Your life might be over and you and you just going to be sitting up wondering, well, what did I do wrong? You know, why, well, why did I think I, th I thought I had so much time to do this? Time is running out. Let me tell you something to, to people that use this excuse here. When you get delivered, when God changed you, don't you understand there's still going to be something wrong with you? If I can ask everybody that I know on her and off camera, when you came into Christ, did it get harder for you or did it get easier for you? And nine times out of ten, people are going to say it got harder because you know why it got harder? They lost a lot of their homeboys and homegirls. Family turned their back on them. You got church folks against you all the time. You got people always coming up against you. Why? Because they did the same thing to Jesus. When you follow Christ, it's great persecution that come with it. It's a lot that come with it. And this is why a lot of people really don't want to follow Christ. Because they don't want it to be that way in their life. 
So you're never going to be perfect like you're thinking in your mind until you get out of this right here, this flesh. Till you get out of this flesh, my brothers and sisters. I'm just trying to say something here to make us think. We all are fighting every day that's in Christ to, to die to ourselves daily. We all got something wrong with us that we can't stand about ourselves. That we it's just a constant fight. I'll, I'm not gonna ask y'all what y'all's is. You know, it's each to their own. It's between you and God. But we know for a fact that we all are fighting with something because truth be told, we all used to be something. Some of us is still something. And then some of us don't want to get rid of nothing at all. We want to continue to wallow in sin to the day we die. So you, you, you will never be right like you thinking in your mind until you get into until you get out of this flesh, my brothers and sisters. Especially if y'all y'all looking at this video, y'all know who I'm talking about. I met some of y'all the other day. Now that y'all know who I am, you know I be on camera a lot. And I'm just reaching out once again and just sharing some, you know, some few things, you know. See, the thing is, you got so many people in the church. They want to keep reminding you of what you used to do, especially when they know you. We got so many people in church that put pressure on you. They want you to get delivered all the way overnight. You, you, you got to change this. You got to change that. God deals with us different, each one of us different. Because what's wrong with me might not be the same thing wrong with Lady D. What's wrong with Lady D might not be the same thing wrong with K-Ray. What K-Ray dealing with in his life, many man probably not dealing with that. So God knows all our problems as well as the solution. So what God is doing in many man life, K-Ray life, Lady D life, he's working on them. So we all are different. So remember, my brother, you just have to look at this video. You got When you get in that spiritual body, then it's going to be all good when we get out this old flesh. One brother, I said, well, what's the reason why you don't go to church? He said, uh, I don't go to church because I'm tired of all the hypocrites in there. And when he said that, I felt that so hard. It just made me really think of a video Mini Man did a long time ago called How Many People Have We Ran Off From The Church? How many people have we really ran off? And there's so many people that won't go to church because of they tired of the hypocrites in there. And we can say all day and night, oh man, don't let nobody stop you from going to church. But when you got somebody that's weak or might not be as strong as you and they see anything and somebody, you know, get on their nerve and, and do something bad to them in the church, first chance they get, they're going to leave. And nine times, just be real, they probably won't come back. He said, I'm tired of the hypocrites. I can't be around them. I'd rather just stay at home. But my thing is, you got hypocrites on your job. See, you go to work every day beside people that's religious, who can't stand you. And I know the church don't supposed to be like that, but we see we got a lot of this going on in the church. But you go to work every day beside people who can't stand you and and they like this. We got family members that's like this. See, there is no such thing as a perfect church at all. But there will be one in the long run. And I'm not talking about no building. I'm not talking about Baptist, Pentecostal, none of these names. I'm talking about Christ. I'm talking about the true church, the body. When we all get together, what a day of rejoicing it's going to be. I heard blog talk uh, Thursday night. Many man and K-Red and Lady D was... Was, was talking about the thousand years toward the end of blog talk about how it's going to be so peaceful and Satan ain't going to be able to do nothing. You can't even imagine that in your mind. It's, that's just something you just got to mind. You just got to say praise the Lord. We can't even get our mind to just think that right there. And no more pain, no more suffering, no more lying, no stealing, no cheating. No more all of this stuff that we see going on. Praise the Lord. I get happy off of that. So when you think about what you deal with every day anyway, I always sit back and say, I can still go to church. And some people, I don't even expect them to ever change because they got their mind made up that they're going to lead this world just like they are. So we dealing with people like this in our family. Some of y'all married to somebody like this. Some of y'all probably just divorced somebody like this. 
You got to be careful who you're dealing with in this life. You got to be careful who you surround yourself around. But there are some good churches out here. If you can find a good Bible teaching church, a good pastor that's standing on the word and not standing on merits, let me tell you something, man. It's nothing, 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 nothing like being in the house of God where people are on one accord. No jealousy. It's nothing... More. Man, I'm telling you, I just love when I can walk in a church and you feel, you truly feel the presence of God in that church. That's a beautiful thing. I pray that everybody can find a church like that. One woman that was in the group, I said, why you don't go to church, sister? She said, because I'm sick of tired, I'm sick and tired of these begging preachers. And what happened with her, she got done wrong at the other church she was at, last church she was at. She paid so much tithes and everything, but when she lost her job, when she lost her home, when she lost her vehicle, she didn't have no help from nowhere. And she went to the church for help. And the church turned it down, of course. So that kind of stuff will make people don't go to church no more. She said out of all that big and the big and all she was she was brainwashed, of course. She was letting them pastors get the best of her and she started paying Paying her tithes. She started giving away her light bill money. She started giving away her gas money. Car no money. Next thing you know, things went downhill and she even lost her job. This is why we cannot be ignorant of the scriptures, man. Pay your tithes. Give from your heart. But don't be, don't be foolish. Don't be stupid either. Because if you got a family especially to take care of, you got a home. Charity, love starts at home. That is so important in the Bible. And most preachers skip over that. I don't know why. So that's why she said she don't go to church no more. And I thought, how many people are like that now? They won't go to church no more because they tired of these pimp preachers begging. So I failed that sister on that. She said, why they don't care about our souls no more? They just caring about money. I asked this one dude. He was a, um, he was a gangster, ex-gangster. And he said the reason why he don't go to church because he don't have the right clothes. And one brother laughed at that. <laughs> he bust out laughing. And I said, well, brother, what's so funny about that? And then I thought about it. I said, look at how many men and women have been turned away from the church because of what they got on. When salvation is an inside job, not an outside job. What in the world does what you have on have to do with going into the kingdom? See this, this tough. See people laugh at this type of stuff, but I'm being serious. These it might sound foolish to somebody else, but to me it wasn't funny because I know too many people that don't go to church because of they told me I couldn't wear my makeup. Some women say they got mad at me because I had jeans on, so I never went back to church no more after that because I thought every church was like that. We got to be careful when we turning folks away from the house of God. That brother said he he didn't he didn't have the right wardrobe because he didn't like he didn't have suits like the like the church he went to. He said he quit going to the church. He said he was trying to change his life from, from being a gangster to being a child of God. And he said the only focus that this one man told him is, brother, you don't you, you can't dress like this. He went in there with his with his gangster type clothes on, blue jean. I believe he said he had on some um Timbos, you know. Of course, he had tattoos on his arm, and they looked at him, and they pretty much judged him, and told him, "You can't come in here like this." See, something's wrong with churches like this. There ain't no love at all. So I understood the brother when he said, "I don't want to dress like them. That's not my style. I don't wear suits. I don't wear gaiters. I come as I am." They to they told me to come as I. As I am, and when I came like I was, they told me to get the hell up out of the church. This is why people, some of the reasons why some people are not going to church. Do y'all feel me in this video, my brothers and sisters? He said one man told him that he needed to dress better and don't come in there like that no more. One dude in the group said, I can't go because... I can't live up to what they keep telling me to do. He said, they're putting too much pressure on me. they hard on me. He said, I just came into Christ, 
And they acting like I'm going to stop smoking tomorrow. They act like I'm going to stop running my women tomorrow. He said, can I get my foot in the door? Can I get worked on? And they kept telling him, well, brother, you're going to go to hell. You got it. You going to hell, man. You need. They. He said they was pretty much just condemning him, but he was in. He was a work in progress, just like all of us. Last time I looked in the mirror, Lord, no, I'm not perfect. That's why I don't mind telling the truth, my brothers and sisters. You do not change overnight, and I'm so tired of people telling you that you gonna change overnight. Because I remember when I got to live, I didn't change overnight. I still have thoughts in my mind of doing stuff that I used to do. I still got to constantly fight not to get on the phone with certain people. I got to constantly fight myself not to go certain places because I know if I just get around it, I might slip up and be right back doing what I used to do. So I fight. But the good thing is, as Brother P.P. Drawn said a long time ago, good thing is we are fighting. Now, if you ain't fighting at all, like P.P. Drawn said, something wrong with you when you ain't fighting at all. Hmm. Some people say they don't go to church, and, and I was asking this other lady, she said, I just don't have the time. My schedule is tight. I work too much. I would love to go, but my job is more important. And I said, sister, I hear you. I said, but what's going to happen if they come out there tomorrow and say, we don't need you no more? See, she was to the point where her job was more important. I said, you forgetting about the one who blessed you with the job. I said, you making good money. I said, but just because you up today, you can be down today. I used to say you could be up today and down tomorrow. I don't even say that no more. I said, you can be up today and down 15 minutes later. You better be careful. What is your trust in? What is your faith in your job? We have to wake up, my brothers and sisters. What are some of the reasons people don't go to church? Hmm. What are some of the reasons people don't go to church? I'm going to tell you one that I always heard that this other brother, Big Mike, said. He said, I'm so sick of the boring preachers. He said, I hate being in church. He said, first of all, they tell you, we start at 1045, but they don't start until almost 1130. And then they, we, he said, we, they want us to stay in church so long. And then you got this boring preacher up there saying the same thing over and over. He said, I just don't have the patience. And see, the house of God should never be bored. Just my opinion. We got people that make it boy. We got people look make it look like we serve a dead God because you can walk in some of these churches, it's just dead. Like the church in, in Revelation. Dead. I believe that was Sardis. Just bad. Just just dead. Got a name. Jesus said, Y'all got a name, but y'all was just spiritually dead. And when you're in a spiritually dead church, even the Lord ain't even gonna come by there. Good God Almighty. Let the church say amen. That's why I understand that, brother. I don't like going to a dead church. I don't like going to a church that's just comfortable. And it got so comfortable and laid back and lazy that there is, there's no growth. See, I feel why a lot of people don't go to church. But I feel why a lot of people do go to church. That brother say he'd rather watch church on TV. I mean, can you really blame him? A lot of people are not going to church too because they losing the faith. They tired of the same thing. They see no changes. And then some are not going to church because you just got a lot of non-believers. Now let's get all the way real. It's a whole lot of people that ain't going to church no more because their boyfriend or their girlfriend is keeping them at home now. What do you mean by that, JT? Well, when you get comfortable in your lifestyle of sin, I didn't say marry folks. I said boyfriend and girlfriend. But let's be real too. You got married folks who some just done got lazy and don't go to church no more. But when you get that lifestyle of shacking up, everything, the devil got a way of making it look so beautiful. Oh man, we, we can do everything we want to do. We eating out, we chilling, we got a little money in the bank. We don't need to go to church, baby. Let's just stay home and lay in the bed. A lot of people are just laying in the bed, playing with each other. Let's just be real. Having sex chilling, let me go fix you something to eat or let's go to the movies and don't care nothing about going to church no more but they used to go to church and that's what Paul was saying when you, especially when you single if it was up to him he said I wish y'all could remain single because once again people be drawn like, he, like we were saying once you touch that woman fellas it's like crack you want it all the time and if you're not careful a woman or man will take you away from ministry Real quick. 
You thought you was strong. You thought you was prayed up. All that pray, that praying you did and reading the Bible and studying. I used to go to Bible study. Now I don't go to church at all because he don't go. He was going with me at first. That's because he got you now. Don't let nobody stop you from serving the Lord. But once again, I'm not saying that, you know, just because you ain't going into the building, you're going to hell and all that stuff like people be saying. The Bible does say do not forsake the summer, but the Bible also say when two or three are gathered, he's in the midst. The true church is the body, not the building. But we, we, we got to understand that. So I, when I talk about that scripture, I rightly divide. I'm tired of people telling people they're going to hell because they ain't going to church. That's false teaching. That ain't what the Bible says. You know, I, I, I'm pretty sure God is not going to put nobody where you didn't go to church. And you sitting there faithfully serving God every day out the week. I understand why people don't go to church. But I understand why they do go to church also. We had one, we had one brother that was real blunt in the group. He said, I'm going to tell you why I don't go. I got a problem with homosexuals. He said the last church he went to, he got out of there because it was just a gay church. And I said, I understand that too, brother. I said, but let me let me throw something at you. I said, I hear what you're saying because it's homosexuals in there. And you know, it's a lot of men like this. Let's be real. It's a lot of men won't go to church because a real man don't like being around that because, you know, it's a lot of homosexuals. They'll come at you. And you got some people out here that don't like it. Some men that'll be ready to fight you in the church if you come at them in that kind of way. Because we got some bold, we got some bold homosexuals in this world that don't care. They'll come at you. And most men, the reaction is to snap, cuss you out, fight. So that's how this brother was. And I'm homosexual. I ain't got nothing against you. God bless you. I love you. But you can't make it in that way. You, Sin is not going to get in, period. I ain't just talking about homosexuals. You're not going to make it in with sin, period. Whoever you are and whatever you're doing, you got to repent and turn from that stuff. But I said, brother, let me hit you with something. I heard what you're saying. You got homosexuals in there. I said, but you got homosexuals in the church. You got lesbians in the church. You got old drunk deacons in the church. You got old players in the church. You got liars. You got people that's shacking up. You got crooked preachers, dirty musicians. I said, I understand what you're saying. But when you go out in the world, y'all y'all walk with me. I'm almost through. I said, these same people you're talking about, why is it you can go to the football game where they at? You can go to the bowling alley where they at. You can go to the the stadiums, wherever, you know, it's a football game, basketball game. You see these same people out in the public, but you don't have no problem with it then. Or if you do have a problem with it, you don't let that stop you from going to the movies. You don't let that stop you from going to the mall where you see them at. So why not go to church still? See, that's a little deep. He had a good question. Why ain't nobody getting, why you, why, you can't say why every, I ain't, how did he say that? Why ain't nobody getting delivered in these buildings? I say you can't say that because it is people being delivered in some buildings. So I can't say every church is bad, every building is bad. because I ain't been to every church in the world. I can't say that. But I be talking about the ones that allow this stuff to go on. And it makes you wonder what is the preacher preaching. But like I say, you see these same people that you're talking about in the club, in the mall, at the basketball games, football games. And you look right over like it's nothing. But when it comes to the house of God, I can't go to church. So y'all give me some feedback. And once again, this video is not to make nobody mad. Of course, I love everybody. I don't care what your saying is. You drunk. You you on dope. You high. I don't. I Hey, I love you. I pray for you as well as you pray for me. Because just because I'm not drunk or I'm not high or... I'm not running around here with women don't mean that I don't have something wrong with me. See, I got to face myself in the mirror also. That's why I check myself every day. So with that being said, my brother and sister, once again, love you. To God be the glory, you know. So let's learn from yesterday. Live for the day. Hope and pray for tomorrow. Y'all give me some feedback on this. Peace.